Hi guys, so it's been a month, exactly a month, since the ULES expansion went ahead and covered the whole of the Greater London area. So just to explain this, ULES is the Ultra Low Emission Zone, introduced in London in April 2019. And cars had to meet a certain uh, Euro standard of emissions in order to drive in that zone, and if they didn't, they would have to pay a daily charge of £12.50. This was further extended in October 2021 to pretty much uh, enclose the areas that were well, basically enclosed by the North and South Circular. So that's pretty much where it stood for a couple of years until August the 29th, 2023, this year, exactly a month ago, when it was then again expanded from what amounted to about 225 square miles of uh, inner London, if you like, to the whole of London, in some cases right up to the M25, which made it up to about 600 square miles, and in fact making it the largest low emission zone in the world. Now, yesterday the news was on and, you know, just, you know, the call of my eyes, I was watching it and I could hear something. There was a report on there about, oh, it's been a month since ULIS was introduced. And there was some expert on there and they asked the expert, well, you know, will we be able to see a positive impact um, in the data from the expanded ULIS zone? And he said, yes, very much. We'll definitely be able to see it, you know, as soon as we get this month's data in. Oh, really? Well, you know what? We can all do that um, because the data is accessible to all of us. So let's take a look at the data right after this. A brown car guy. Brown car guy. So this is a website, aqicn.org. I'll put the link below. Now, you don't have to use this website because it's actually there's several websites. All you do is you just Google live air quality data and it's accessible. And there's several websites providing this data and this information. They all corroborate with each other. I have, I have looked at several of them. Um, and the reason I'm looking at this particular one on this occasion is because obviously you can see how they've laid it out here. London Air Pollution Real-Time Air Quality Index is showing you right now, 34 good. But it's also breaking down all the individual uh, emissions um, elements of the emissions I should say so PM 2.5 you can see PM 10 um, uh, nitrogen dioxide NOx um, as people talk about and even um, uh, uh, CO2 as well so but the good thing the reason I'm going to use this one is because when you scroll down um, as you can see it has this air quality historical data and I like the way they've done this because the way that it's accessible here is you can see, look at that, you can see back to 2014. And remember, this is all for London. So this is uh, back to 2014. You can see all of the data. Now, one thing that I think this does actually confirm is that, you know, and I should just reiterate something that I've said in several videos. I've gone on record several times saying this, but people still seem to be confused about this. I have never protested the introduction of ULES or congestion charging. I'm a Londoner, I grew up in London, I know what it's like, I know how well connected it is, and I also know how dense it is, how um, intense it is in terms of traffic, you know, and, and, you know, and how, well, the other day I put up a stat, it was 14,500 people per square mile, that's the density of the population in London, um, and you know, traffic, and you know how bad it can get, so you know all of those things, so you go, okay, yes, we, we need to do something in that central London area. And I grew up there and I lived there. Of course, now I live in outer London area. And here it's completely different. The whole density of it is different. The amount of uh, green space we have is much, much greater. The, the sparsity between buildings and roads and people is much, much greater. It's completely different. And the argument has always been is that you led up to 2021 20, October. Okay, leave it there. It doesn't really benefit going any further than that. And um, in fact, the data that we have here seems to corroborate that because if you look at the this is 2014 uh, and you can see you know there's there's a large part so really the dark green is good so the dark green is the good stuff because that's low numbers so the way that they've done this is they've gone if you take like a month of this so let's for example look at august say in 2014 and what it's telling you is the dark green you had 12 days of that you know and that's that was the aqi of 25 to 50 so that's a low AQI, so that's good. And then you had 16 days of green, which was between 50 and 75. And then you had two days of yellow, which was 75 to 100. So if I take that away and you can look at the entire uh, month, uh, sorry, the entire year there, then you can see that the level of light green 
is probably the most there with quite a bit of yellow and occasionally a bit of red there as well and of course then that's not necessarily good because the red is 150 to 175 so that's 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 bad news and this is all looking at pm 2.5 at the moment why have i put it on pm 2.5 because that's the smaller particulate matter this is the one that's regarded as dangerous to human health because it can get into your lungs it can get into your bloodstream and it can cause all kinds of health issues so that's the one we're going to look at although i will scroll through the others as well but this one is the most vivid in its contrast and it's the clearest way to actually judge what's been happening with the air quality in London. So again, so if you look at 2014, that's a lot of light green there, even more light green in 2015. Um, and it, and it's, sim it's similar for 2016, 2017, 2018. It looks, they all look very, very similar. But interestingly, in 2019, there's, there's a definite contrast. There's a definite difference. Now, certainly, of course, cars have got cleaner. And, you know, we did see the introduction of electric cars coming in, you know, around five years ago. Probably people have really started buying them and using them. So that could have an impact. Car emissions have got better. So that could have an impact. So all of these things will definitely have had an impact. But, you know, you could well look at this and you would say that, well, there is some red and orange in January. There is also in February and in March and in April. But post-April, there's a lot more dark green and a lot more light green and very little yellow and red. So again, the fact that they say that the introduction of ULES in uh, central London itself that's the original introduction in 2019, um, reduced air quality or improved air quality by 46%. You can believe it because if you look at this and you go, yeah, well, okay, that's a lot of dark green there. So that is a much, much better situation when it comes to air quality. So you can accept that. You go, okay, well, actually that makes sense. And then you move to 2020 and that's also quite green and maybe a little bit more dark green. And the same goes for 2021. Now, one thing to keep in mind here before we get to the second expansion is that 2020 and 2021 is when we were hit with the pandemic. So there were a lot of lockdowns. And of course, the lockdowns were a lot of time and you could, you could see the air was cleaner, you could taste it was cleaner, you could smell it was cleaner. It had a substantial impact. So there was no doubt about the fact that you completely could tell human activity as much as possible in a dense urban environment. And of course, the air quality is going to improve. I mean, that's, that's a given. So definitely that would have skewed these results. So if you look at the contrast between 2019 and then 2020 and 2021, you can see that 2020 and 2021 had a lot more green in it compared to 2019. And it kind of makes sense because of the lockdowns. But of course, some people would argue that the expansion might have had an, uh, a benefit there. But actually that expansion came in in October. So October here in 2021. And after October 2021, you can actually see that it didn't really seem to show that much improvement because actually the November and December were pretty similar, if not actually worse, because there was a little bit more red and yellow in, the, in December than there was in October. So I don't know if that's really had a benefit. And again, when you look at 2022, and if you still say that, well, 2022 is showing similar amounts of green to uh, 2020 and 2021. However, um, you could say, well, because we still had lockdowns. No, because that was done in 2021. So pretty much 2022 was a normal-esque normal -esque year. Obviously, there has been a substantial move for people uh, to move to people working at home now. So there's less commuting, less traveling going on. So of course that could have an impact as well and almost certainly will have had an impact. And also people have changed their habits a little bit and also people have changed their cars as well. So we are seeing that transition towards you know, a better, cleaner environment. And I think that's corroborated by these figures, but we're still seeing yellow um, and orange and just a tad of red there as well. So I don't necessarily think that the expansion in October 2021 had the effect that the original introduction had in April 2019, which is pretty clear. But here you can't really see that difference. So now let's fast forward straight away to this year, 2023, and we can see here what's going on. Now, um, this is August here. So in August, this is before ULES. As you can see, 25 days of medium green, three days of dark green, and three days of light green. No yellow, no orange, no red at all. So actually, it was a pretty clean month. That was actually quite good. Um, so majority AQI was less than 50, which is well, well within safety parameters. Um, and if you then look at September, 
you can see that things actually got worse. So September was the first month of the ULIS expansion. The ULIS expansion happened in August, uh, 29th of August, 2023. So the whole of September, you can say, we have had the ULIS expansion throughout London. And even if you say, well, where were these meters? Are they central London? Are they outer London? Well, it doesn't really matter because the point is that what they said is that by expanding it, it would improve all of London. So regardless, this, this should show an improvement, but actually, it's actually gone worse. And in fact, now at this point, we can look at this chart here at the top. Now this, this bar here actually shows us month by month. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Now you can see with a little bit of red and orange, so also orange really in February. But other than that, March, April, May, June, July, and indeed August have all been pretty clear. They've all been the majority green, light green, dark green, and actually August, July and August were actually very clean according to this. But when you look at this segment here, so this is September. So again, you can very clearly see that it actually got worse. Now, to be fair, why did it get worse? And it's very obvious why it got worse, because uh, around just after the first week of September, we had the Saharan winds come in. So that's where you know, you know when that's happened because it did rain and you would have seen rain on your car, say at the end of August or beginning of September. And if you, if you do like I do, which you keep your car polished and detailed and stuff like that, then the rainwater will just come off it. And actually the car stays pretty clean. But when you get the Saharan rain, then no matter what you've done to your car, when you come back, you will see the brown patches all over the car because it's that sand that's coming through. And that sand is a 2.5 um, PM 2.5 particles. So, that this why it's got worse you can clearly see from the fact i think because of the saharan winds that came in but overall when you look at the rest of the month um it pretty much reverts to the same thing as we've had in august so actually overall the month got worse and we can see external factors have actually made that worse so that's the reason for that um but other than that it's about the same so the, there isn't any difference at all now so let's go pm 2.5 the two main things that they look at it's PM 2.5 uh, and uh, nitrogen dioxide. So NOx, nitrogen dioxide, that's the real one to worry about. Let's look at PM 10 uh, briefly. And as you can see, majority green. In fact, throughout, throughout you can see it's green. So you go through all, all the years and it's just dark green, dark green, dark green. So PM 10 is, has, does not appear to have been a problem at all in London, uh, ever. Move to uh, NOx and you can see here again, so, Again, going back down to 2014, very few yellows. In fact, no yellows in 2014 at all. It's only in 2015, 2016, 2018 that we see some yellows. Otherwise, we see light greens throughout until 2019. And there we see much darker greens then coming along. And we've seen pretty much dark greens over the last uh, four years without any issue, whatever, three and a half, three, three to four years, you'd say. Um, and again, if you look by month by month, it's all green all the way through. And, um, you know, if anything, it's got lighter a little bit in September, again, around the same time that we saw the orange um, earlier from the PM 2.5 because of the Saharan rains. We also see a lighter green there at the same period. And so again, that appears that that also affects the nitrogen dioxide element of air pollution, uh, sorry, 2023, that also impacts the air quality. But other than that, it looks pretty much identical. In fact, if anything, so like for like, for like day for day, if you see that, 13 uh, on the 26th of August, 13 AQI on the 30th of September, or let's go, how do I find 26? Uh, that's 23, okay, doesn't, maybe it doesn't give us, so 30th is 13. So actually it's just, it's, it doesn't, it seems to have got a little bit worse rather than better. So there you go. There's the data, and the data clearly shows, and I'm going to put it back to, and if you want to look at CO2, I mean, again, there's no, no difference whatsoever. It's just it's dark green. So the, only, the only worst year we had was 2014, and since then, it's just been solid dark green. So no issue uh, whatsoever with CO2. Um, go back to CO2, that one. Um, AQI, zero. AQI, zero. AQI, zero. AQI, one. I mean, that's pretty much all you're going to get. So just going back to the PM 2.5s, you can see the data there, because that's, like I said, the most vivid and most clear as to what the difference has been and there's been no improvement whatsoever since the ULIS expansion happened and of course it's been the first month 
so you might want to say, well, we should give it three months, we should give it six months. Well, you know what? I invite you all to continue to monitor this. I'll put the link for this one below in the description. But like I said, you can use any of these uh, and you can also use obviously the portable device that I used in the original air quality test videos that I did in the previous uh, ULIS zone and at the time what was the proposed expanded zone. Um, so you can, you can use that device if you want to do that or I mean these are obviously more accurate and of course that device doesn't measure NOx, it only measures uh, particulate emissions but that's what we're really looking at here. So there you go. If anybody does come on and use, or if anybody, any expert does say that, well, since the expansion of ULES, the air has got better, you can just show them this and say, well, it hasn't really. Brown Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, please hit the like button and share this video as well, if you can. And while you're at it, check out these guys who also sponsor my content. I am deeply grateful to them because it helps me to buy new equipment, put fuel in the cars, and yes, buy a cup of coffee. You can do the same, just go here or right here on YouTube. Just hit these three little dots down here and click on thanks. Make sure you're signed in first. My content is free, but this is how you can help me keep it that way. I may even send you a gift. Oh, by the way, watch this next.